Hi, my name's Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking about citrus splitting, orange splitting, lemon splitting, and even grapefruits splitting. Why? What's happening? And how do we prevent this from happening again? And I'm working here on my Eureka lemon tree here in the garden. It's only a year old. I installed it less than actually 12 months ago. Looks pretty good, right? Wrong. Half the fruit on this have split. Come and check this out. If we take a look at this lemon over here, looks good on this side, but turn it around and take a look at that. Split in half. At least half of that has split. And if we take a look at this fruit over here, split. And another one back here, split. So what's the first thing we're gonna do? We're gonna remove all the damaged fruit. So we've got about five fruit that are left that haven't split and hopefully won't split. And then we picked five that have in fact split. Take a look at all of these. Before I explain what's happening and what caused it, and it's not the only fruit in my garden that have split. There's a couple other examples I'll show you throughout, but just before I started the video, you may notice that I've been painting and coating the side of the plant. And I'm doing so organically using a product called Ivory Organic. It's a, let me bring the can over to you. This is going to be the 2017 um, label, which is a yellow um, label. And it says Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, and it's a non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product, and it's now registered material for use in organic agriculture. And what I'm doing is by coating the plant, I'm actually offering the plant protection from sunburn as the sun rises um, just behind you viewers, and basically casts intense heat against this plant, this side of the plant, all day long we're talking about 10 to 12 hours of continuous sunlight against the plant and being that the plant hasn't created a canopy to shade the lower part of the plant we've now given it the protection so that it doesn't burn and suffer any damage and instead it can put its time energy and resources towards um, growing and creating more leaves and more branches and ultimately supporting more fruit so i've coated it one other thing i want to show over here is this prune branch that i have over here And unfortunately, I don't have a large branch to share with you, but you can see that I pruned it over here. And this is a wonderful entryway into the heartwood of the plant. So by coating it over here with the ivory organics, I'm able to protect it from any wood boring insects that may attempt to penetrate and get into the um, center of the plant and hollow the center of the tree. And now it's coated with an organic paint that also has um, oils, which include, and let me share this with you, which include castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, cedarwood oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, oil that are all basically infused and time released within the paint to basically pr offer it protection against not just sunburn and sun scald in the winter, but as well as insects and rodents from damaging the bark and ultimately compromising the health and the life of the tree. Let me show you a couple other examples within the garden as well. Follow me. So this here behind me is a two-year-old, also just like the first lemon, um, a Eureka lemon, and both of them are also semi-dwarf. So they should be growing anywhere from about eight to 12 feet is the average range height for these plants. But take a look at the difference. This one here, the roots have really, you know, grown accustomed to its location, the watering, the feeding um, pattern and everything else. But let me show you a couple instances of damage here. Take a look at this. 
Take a look at these clusters of fruit. You can see that we're growing these very successfully. But right in here, a split lemon. We'll remove that. Let me show you another as well. Take a look if you zoom in a little bit further behind the plant. You can notice right in here, another cracked lemon. And let's get that out as well. And here we go. Two more split fruit. So what's causing all the splitting? And there's a lot of reasons, and most research will say it's not just one reason that's the cause for the citrus split. The first one is water. And you can see over here I've got, you know, a very focused irrigation system that basically waters the root all around the plant. But as you can see what's happening is the water is watering only this side of the plant. I sometimes have to go around the plant and improve the soil structure and everything else so that it floods better and more rapidly. But sometimes the water, and especially if there's also issues with moles and gophers and, um, you know, and these underground rodents, which I battle at least a few times throughout the year, they'll sometimes take the water from this zone and then divert it to somewhere away from the plant. Um, but so far you can see that the water is collecting nicely around this side of the plant, but this entire part of the tree could be running dry. And what will happen is the root system will end up becoming more concentrated on this side of the plant and not create a nice balanced and healthy lemon tree or whatever other type of citrus you may be growing. A way to correct this is in addition to your sprinkling methods and try to watch it and ideally it'll be watering a nice circular area around the root ball of the plant and uniformly all around it. But if this is not sufficient, what I do in my garden is I'll visit my plants around its watering schedule. And keep in mind, the citrus need more water in the summer, naturally, and less water in the spring and fall, and the least amount of water in the winter. Hopefully the rainfall should, should suffice. And citrus in general are considered drought tolerant plants, meaning that the soil should run relatively dry between waterings as well. And when you do water, water very deep and thoroughly. And deep meaning make sure that when you water, you water um, enough that you end up soaking the entire root ball. So in addition to running my sprinklers, what I'll often do at least every other watering schedule time is I'll come with my hose and I'll water the plant to make sure that it's being watered in a balanced method. And here you can see I'm now watering the entire root ball around the plant. will allow that to continue to run. In the meantime, let me explain what's happening with the water and what's causing the citrus to split. One of the main reasons for citrus splitting is typically high, hot summer days followed by warm gusts of wind that ultimately end up drying the skin of the fruit and causing it to dehydrate. When you go and water your plant on the second round, following those hot and dry and windy days, the water will get back into the fruit and then the skin won't be able to expand as fast as the water is filling up the inner part of the fruit, causing the fruit to crack and break as this has over here. So one train of thought and one um, reason that farmers have found that the citrus will split is hot summer days followed by wind and then adding water. And one way to correct it, because I don't want to just give you the reason without explaining how to correct that issue, is if you know you're going to have those hot, windy days, is to water in advance of it, and then followed by, um, and make sure you water it very well before those hot and windy days, and then make sure that you gradually water them mildly on the days following to correct any dehydration to the plant. So that's one idea. A second idea is, again, the influx of the waters and sugars into the fruit are coming in so fast. And again, the fruit is in and the fruit rind, the skin, the peel are just not prepared to handle that type of growth. That too causes the crack and the fruit to split. So again, it's the water, it's the control of water. Um, one way to make sure that this doesn't happen is to 
make sure that you regulate the water to the best of your ability. Make sure that you're running things consistently. Um, most of these fruit in the garden, and here we are at the end of December, I attribute the splitting to a lot of rain. We fortunately have had a lot of rain here in the month of December here in Los Angeles. Um, these plants, I've been keeping them regulated on a pretty good watering schedule throughout the year, but it was just too much water and these fruits can handle it. The more mature trees have, the ones that are established and looking healthy and growing and, um, and doing all the things that a mature tree should be doing, but this one being a first year citrus plant here in my garden, just didn't have the strength nor the energy nor the root system to stabilize that influx of change. Um, so again, attributed to watering. Other reasons could also be the soil nutrition. So make sure that you're feeding your plants three times a year. And I've done some videos to discuss the importance of organic fertilizers and different ways to, to fertilize your plant. I'll put that link down below so you can reference that as well. But the goal is to feed your plants every spring, summer, and fall with a granular fertilizer that'll slow feed and release into the soil over the course of three months. So you'll be able to feed them three times a year. And you can also do some liquid feeds in between. I discuss all those in another video. So we've just discussed four factors that lead to fruit splitting. The main one is water. And as you can see here, we're soaking the plant. So I'm gonna wrap up this video so we can turn it off. But the other major factors are high heat and wind, as well as soil nutrition. And more likely than not, it's a balance of all of these factors to create healthy plants that have deep roots and can stabilize any influx of any of those particular conditions. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, be sure to like it, and most importantly, subscribe down below so you'll be connected to all the other educational gardening videos by Ivy Organics. Thanks again for watching, happy gardening.